never have enough time to play at I'm getting ready to get started on my wiring for my LCC network. So I thought I better do a little explanation of, of what LCC is and what it's not. So in the broadest terms, I wanted I want to explain kind of the differences between DCC and LCC. So here here's the way I like to think of it, and I'll start by saying that that LCC is not designed to replace DCC. Okay, and if you're brand new to to model railroading, DCC stands for Digital Command Control. It is the industry standard by which we control trains today. Uh, LCC is, is kind of new to the market uh, and I don't know how new, I think it's at least 10 years old, but th there's, it's been slow for anyone to actually move to LCC. So, so in the broadest terms, the way I like to think of it, digital command control controls trains. Uh, anything and everything to do with the running of a train is going to be handled by DCC. Uh, the throttle controls, uh, speed inputs, uh, if you have sound, uh, you know, your, your interface at the throttle as it goes to the train is what I'm going to use DCC for. It can do other things, but but in the terms of what I'm doing, DCC is going to control my trains. LCC is what I'm going to use to control, and that's kind of a bad picture, to control the layout. Okay, LCC will control the layout. <clears throat> So if it's associated with the layout, switch controls, uh, block detection, uh, signaling, anything along those lines, that's what the LCC will do. Uh, so what is the difference between the two? Because you cer certainly can do things uh, with DCC and not make use of LCC at all. So let's talk real quick about how DCC communicates. If you think of DCC as a commander and then all of the other components as soldiers, okay, the, the information comes from the throttle, which in this case would be a soldier, the information comes from here, goes to the command center, and then from the command center gets distributed to whoever else needs to know the information. Sometimes it goes, or every time, it will also go out on the rails. So if, if I put a throttle input in and I want to speed my train up or honk my horn, that information is going to come from the throttle to the controller, out the rails, to the train. Okay, and then the train will, will act upon whatever inputs you put into your throttle. Okay, so think of that as as your your command soldier communication. Every communication has to go through the through the command station. Okay, so the same thing if, if you want to make use of this to switch a turnout then you're gonna switch whatever settings you need to on your throttle. Uh, that information then goes to here, goes out from here, or goes out on the loco net then, and then goes to another decoder, and then from that decoder goes to whatever device is then turning your switches. Uh, so the disadvantage of that is none of your other components talk to each other. So, you know, if your turnout doesn't know that it's been turned somewhere else. So if th this turnout gets turned, this turnout doesn't know that, that it's been turned. 
So your communication all happens here. And it's a one-way one street. This pulls uh, all of your devices constantly and looks for information to act upon and then sends the information back out to act upon. It, it, it pulls everything constantly, a round robin of communication. Let's talk about how LCC communicates. LCC is what you would call a peer-to-peer -peer communication. They have what are called nodes. Uh, this is actually a tower LCC, and each node is going to be interconnected by an Ethernet cable. So the way they communicate is that every node can listen and act upon any information produced by another node. So an example of that might be if you have an island and say you've got staging underneath the island and you might need to throw switches in your staging and you don't want to have to walk all the way around the island to hit the same switch every time if you wanted to make use of, of a control panel. Uh, so you can configure these nodes so that every time you know every time you push a push button it creates an event and it's a unique event so a push button on this side of the island when you push it creates a unique event and a different push button on the other side of the island would create a specific event with a unique uh, ID number to it this device and any other device on the layout will know when that event occurs because it gets broadcasted across the network. And then each node listens to that and then it will run a series of logic based on what it just heard, what just occurred, and do I need to act upon it. Okay, it doesn't have to go through a central command station and then the command station issue the order out to an individual uh, or groups of individuals. Okay. So, so that's going to be the advantage, is that it's highly configurable. Uh, this particular device has 16 channels. Each channel can be configured either as an input or an output. And, and if you're curious, you know, what you can do with that, uh, block detection, of course, is, is an easy answer. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm getting ready to do after I get finished with, with my little uh, rambling on here and, and trying to kind of give a big picture of what I'm doing. But each one of these channels can be configured to listen to uh, a track and know that it has been occupied, either by an engine or a car with a resistor wheel set on it. And then it can take that information and that information gets broadcasted to the entire network. And so if it, if it meets certain criteria, then signals will change. Uh, I plan on, on using at least one semaphore on this layout so that when, when trains move, things happen automatically. That can also take place, uh, you know, you can actually make your your block occupancy create your turnouts to change based on the logic of this train enters here, does it have priority, so on and so forth, and switches change accordingly. Uh, so, so that's kind of the overview. DCC is going to control my trains, and LCC will control the layout. And I'm going to get into the physical connections here in just a minute. Okay, as far as the physical connections go, uh, this is what I'm looking at, kind of, kind of trying to explain this. <clears throat> so, this device here is a CT coil. It recognizes the, the difference in voltage from one rail to the other. And if, and if I'm not explaining that exactly right, I apologize if, for someone who's watching this who, who's a little more uh, 
intelligent about that than I am, but it, it recognizes that there is a train on the track. Okay, and the way that's accomplished is one of your feeder drops is routed through, and then it goes, you know, one end is, is on the rail, the other end goes through the CT coil, and then this goes back to the bus a, as normal. Okay, and then there's two wires connected to the CT coil, and in this case, what I'm going to do is there's two pairs in each. This, this is, I believe, Cat5 cable. So there's four pairs of two wires each. We've got a brown, a white with a brown uh, stripe, and then an orange, and a, then a white with an orange tracer, blue, and green. And so what I'm going to do is each of these wires, uh, depending on how I'm making use of it at the LCC end, will equal one channel. So you'd have channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if needed. And in this case, since I'm going to the block occupancy detector, uh, it takes two wires and they come back in and they will interface here. Uh, so that there's, there's eight inputs here and it takes two wires each. Uh, and you, as you can see, one run will take care of four. So I'm going to have to have two runs of this Cat5 cable to take care of one occupancy, one, one, one BOD, uh, one detector. So the way I'm going to do that is my second run, and I don't know if you can see it because I can't really tell looking at the camera myself, but I've got one black tracer, uh, I did it with Sharpie on the end here. So that will be channels or, or inputs one through four, blocks one through four. And then over here, I've got two uh, Sharpie marks on this end, and that would be five, six, seven, and eight. So that when they route back to here uh, from some distance away, then I will know which colors are going where. And I, I plan on being uh, the same everywhere is that, you know, the brown will always be channel one, the brown with the brown, or the white with the brown tracer will always be channel two, so on and so forth, but how they interface back at the device will change. Uh, so that's my plan there. So whenever this information is relayed back to the detector, the detector then takes that information as to which block is currently occupied, and it's quite possible in some scenarios that more than one block can be occupied at the same time. Uh, that information then is relayed on this ribbon cable back to the actual uh, tower LCC to the channels themselves and then you configure the channels independently based on what you want them to do with the information that you've received. Whether it be signal control, uh, Turnout control, this over here is a stall motor driver, so it can, it can use up to eight uh, stall motors, which is what I'm going to use for my tortoises, and I'm going to get started on wiring all that, and I'm getting ready to take all the cars off, all the trains off, and flip the layout back over and get started.